Howdy folks. You haven't seen my garden since it was all dirt. And uh, if you look at it now, it's all green. Let me tell you what I'm growing and uh, how I'm doing it. All right. So this row right here, this is sweet peppers. You see a tomato there. Uh, you also see flowers and some herbs. Now, all right, that's in the sternum. These two are marigolds. And there's another in the sternum. We got sweet peppers and a tomato. I can't remember what kind of tomato that is. On the next row, next two rows, we have our determinant Roma tomatoes. These are a paste tomato. Now, a couple, oh, a week ago, I noticed I was having blossom end rot. Let me show you a couple specimen. Uh, you see that one with his butt pointed at us right there well um you see that well they aren't all like that so obviously i've done something see those are kind of bad real bad but uh to remedy i was talking to a man i work with um, he's got a, he runs a nursery and flowers and, you know, mums and strawberries and blackberries. Anyways, he knows what he's talking about. And he told me, you know, get lime. So I got some lime and, uh, as a preventative and a diet, not diagnosal, as prescriptive and preventative, I put a little bit, a couple tablespoons, two to three around the base of each plant. Sprinkled some around it. And I watered it good. About every night. And then one night we got between, in areas it was localized between one and three inches. Um, the man I work for at the farm said he got four inches. I don't know how much we got, but we got a whole bunch. Now, these are my Roma tomatoes. Um, I pruned these the first time. I didn't know how you were supposed to. I've staked them. These I haven't really pruned much, just the very bottom, so it's off the ground. Um... You see there are various levels of growth because some were starts, like I planted seeds and I planted them, you know, once they got to about four leaves, I transferred them to a cup with pot and soil in them. And once the temperatures got right and I let them, oh, yeah. I let them adjust, you know, what do they call it? I can't remember the proper term, but getting them used to being more in sun. Then I planted them. All right. So then we've got a whole row. This was supposed to be an experiment row of sweet and hot peppers. Well, my hot peppers had a greater germination rate than the sweet peppers. So... I had more starts of hot peppers to plant than I did sweet peppers. So you see, you know, that little sweet pepper, that little sweet pepper, but not a whole lot of sweet peppers. Um, you see they've already started putting on fruit yellow. These are cascabellas. They'll be yellow, orange, then red. I'll try to harvest them when they're yellow and orange. 
and towards the end of the season, I'll harvest them when they're red. It's supposed to be different types of flavor, you know. But I'm not a big hot pepper eater, so I'll have to figure out how to use them. Now, these next, is it, it this row right here, you see it kind of is jungly. Well, these are my yellow pear tomatoes, recommended by Preacher's Day Off, Harold Smith. They are yellow, you know, you can see the general shape. Uh, let's find a good example, more developed. Um, right here. You see that? They're like that. They'll turn yellow. It's supposed to be a very good propagator. These are obviously non-determinant. So, I got them staked. And I probably need to work on that a little bit. But they're doing real good. Then we've got... These are Jubilee. These are orange tomatoes. And uh, they've put on, obviously, a determinant variety. Indeterminate. Then we've got my row of single hot peppers. And uh, I've got some tomatoes in there because they're... I, I didn't prune them until they got too much on the tomatoes because I didn't know I was ignorant and then I looked up and I realized I needed to prune them so I did that and you see my nesternum you know it's blooming they're real pretty see all right now these are my blue lake bush beans and these were sort of succession planted like the first either two or three rows and then the next two rows oh there's a, a young deer over there snorting um then i've got my squash i've got this is crookneck early crookneck these right here are normal crookneck and the rest are waltham butternut squash and uh get out of my ear you mosquito okay so the ones that aren't next to the fence these are a non-organic just said vegetable in the pack and the ones along the fence are organic. I don't know. Look the same other than that. But they aren't doing as well. Well, let me show you the first line of stuff. These aren't doing as well because they don't have as much sun. Between that big black oak and that big maple they don't get a whole lot of sun and it isn't but about uh what is it 10 either 9 or 10 o'clock until about three o'clock they get middle day sun late morning early afternoon so last week I'd been noticing I had a whole bunch of squash. Let me flip this around. I noticed I had a whole bunch of squash bugs and I noticed a squash borer. Now, you don't want those to get out of hand. They can wipe you out. So, in talking with my, my man I'm working with, um, working for, he recommended me to get a uh, pesticide for them. And I also had bugs and all on my beans too. So I got, it was seven, and it's a permethrin one. I think it said eight on the 
container. I'll show you the container. But anyways, I mixed it up in a backpack sprayer. Sprayed them. I uh, did this last Tuesday. This is July 4th. Um, so, sprayed them last week. He said every 7 to 10 days until or until they're at bay. You know, they're taken care of. And yesterday, Mom harvested our first uh, crookneck squash. I didn't get a picture of it because I didn't know she was going to harvest it. So, I don't see any bugs. No bugs. Only uh, where they were. So that's good. I know. I know. Chemicals, chemicals. Well, would you like some chemicals and wash it off before you eat it? Or hardly any plant or produce and no chemicals? Take your pick. Um, Alright, so that's these. Mom, before I sprayed, I got her to pick the beans. She didn't get a whole lot. So, um, I'll bring you over to my corn. I have corn. Yes, I do. Why do I still have the camera going? When I got a brand new camera, a, uh, a GoPro, I got one of them. And I'm using my phone without my video editor. Well, you see, I I ought to get on there on my computer with my phone and all. Not my phone, but with my GoPro. This is going to look amazing compared to this. So you just have to stay tuned. I'll try to do like a weekly update, like on Sundays, like I did last year. Anyways, tomorrow I'm not going to be at home because uh, I'm going with my uncle and aunt and cousin because he's a year below me looking at colleges it's a couple it's one of the colleges in nc and uh tell y'all a little bit more about that on the later video but i'm not going to be here for most of the day tomorrow and i want to get this video out soon and my batteries on my gopro need charging because if you ever use one of those, you got to have plenty batteries up charged. Because it goes through them like that. Anyways, as I've been talking, I hope you can see this corn back here. It's grown real tall. Like seven foot, seven feet. Average. Real tall. I should have thinned more though. Because in between the tall ones, there's shorter ones on this front right here and the ones on the back side are taller a little bit more ahead because when i watered the tomatoes and peppers with the sprinkler the excess that didn't get on the tomatoes and peppers would go on this that the first row the closest row to that so that's why they're a little taller let me flip this around tired my arm out so they've obviously tasseled and they're putting ears on now as we see. All right, we got ears on there. I'll come at it from a different direction so y'all can see better. I didn't know I was zoomed in, I'm sorry about that. So a uh, whole bunch of these have at least one in various stages of development. I got a few like this one and some over here that'll be ready in a couple days. And um, all of them are about soaking out. Some of them have more than one like this one. I hope they all were pollinated good. 
I hope they were because I only have two full rows and one partial row, like a third. I have this covered with this weed fabric. It's not weed fabric. It's fabric or tar. Not tar. It's something you put down before you put your roof on. And we had it. We used it. I used it actually to cover up my corn when I planted it. Because we got sub-zero. Not sub-zero. Good night. That's few and far between. But we got at freezing or a little bit above it and it was right after i had planted them so i wanted to conserve the heat under there and it did a pretty good job because this is july 4th and look how developed my corn is those are my taller ones that's probably eight feet i don't have a tape measure with me but that's my garden i have some along the back side of that rock wall but it it's harder to water it because the hose only stretches so far and it gets basically no sun like very little sun at all because it's obviously got the rock wall and then it's got that big black oak so i'm doing i'm doing good on my black berries this year, I did, this past year, I did a little something different than I had before. When we had, when I've eaten oranges or bananas. I had to say the right word. Sorry. I had to think a minute. So whenever I had a peel, I just tear it up and put it around the base of the plants. And it looked like they put on some good, good fruit this year. Um, the first fruits I've harvested some doing good, tasting good. My blueberries, I had a whole bunch on there, so much so the birds knew about it. And we put fabric up over them, and I ended up picking a lot of them too early. They were they were blue, but they weren't fully ripe, so they were kind of tart. But uh. Yeah. Now you may wonder why I planted flowers. Oh, I also planted herbs like basil and basil, cilantro, rosemary. Can't remember if I had any time. But the basil and cilantro certainly I know came up. The others had a whole lot longer wait time. Like germination rate. Anyways. I planted the flowers and herbs in along with these peppers and tomatoes. It's called like companion planting. Like the different oils in them can deter pests. And it seems to be doing a pretty good job on my tomatoes and peppers from what I saw. Um, but yeah. I know this was kind of a long video. And... I don't know if you stayed to the end to watch it, um, but it's been a long time and I wanted to somewhat get the bases covered on it well, and I hope you all enjoyed it, my somewhat rambling, but everything seems to be holding out okay. Um, I'm very thankful to have the resources I have and the one guy I work for, because he was a farm extension agent before he retired, so he could really help me a whole lot in diagnosing things. Like, hey, I don't do this often. It was, I've only had to, it's only been with the blossom end rot and with the pest up there. Hey, he had, I call, he called me about work anyways, and I was like, hey, I've got some bug issues with my squash, and I described it, described it, and then about my tomatoes too. He said, ah, oh, just you know, whatever. So yeah. Anyways, thank you all for watching. You got anything to say?
other than my camera skills right now because I deleted my editing app so I can't edit my videos so this is just straight shot rough cut and just wait to the next one the picture quality and everything will be so much better I just I, I need to have time to get acclimated to editing it on the computer versus my phone and from the GoPro itself so I got it earlier on but I hadn't I'd made clips but I hadn't made them into videos so just wait for the next one it'll be really good um thank you all for thank thanks for watching forgive me for my repetition and if you got anything to say, let me know in the comments. And give me feedback. I love reading y'all's comments. Bye.